today's video, I'm going to talk about a different subject than what I usually do. I want to do that so you can have a small taste of the upcoming institutional methods that will be released this year. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the volatility index, which is also known as the fear index for reasons that will hopefully become clear by the end of the video. The volatility index was created by the Chicago Board Options Exchange and it's based on the implied volatility of the S&P 500 options. For those of you that might not be familiar with how derivatives work, the implied volatility is a measure of future volatility, unlike historical volatility which is a measure of past volatility. The implied volatility is extracted of the Black-Scholes model which is an options pricing model that won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1997. The model gained notoriety by being able to model the future volatility based on certain assumptions. For example, the Black-Scholes model assumes that stock price returns are log normally distributed, meaning that the log returns are normally distributed, and also that stock prices follow a Brownian motion. Long story short, when the implied volatility of options rise, it means that there will be more volatility in the future. The volatility index is also called the fear index because a lot of volatility also means a lot of risk and price fluctuation. In finance, risk, volatility, and standard deviation of log returns mean the same thing. In basic terms, when there is more volatility, price deviates more from its mean, and then it can be very good or very bad depending on how you are positioned in the market. To give you a practical example of this, Take a look at the daily volatility index of this year. The sharp rise began at the end of February, which was when the world started to realize that there was going to be a global pandemic and that it would deeply affect the economy as a whole. In other words, the volatility index was showing that the markets were anticipating a lot of volatility happening in the following months, which definitely happened. If we zoom out the volatility index chart, we can see the same effect in the 2008 financial crisis. When the market realized there was a housing price bubble, the volatility index skyrocketed. The measure of implied volatility gives an insight into the future of the market, and it's commonly used by institutional traders in many different ways. It's interesting to observe that the volatility index chart has a few properties that other financial charts usually don't have. Observe how it's a constantly sideways market, meaning that it doesn't display different trends over time. That makes volatility a lot easier to predict than the, than the direction of a normal price chart, which is something that we'll explore in great detail in the institutional trading books I'm writing at the moment. Observe that when there are massive spikes of volatility like in the 2008 financial crisis and in the 2020 global pandemic, the volatility index remains stationary to a certain degree. In other words, it's always a sideways market. You can understand the benefit of this by imagining how much easier it would be to trade a market that you knew to be always sideways. Like in regular financial charts like stocks and currencies, for example, there is a major flow and a minor flow. Observe how there are larger and cyclical spikes that occur in the long term and smaller and more frequent spikes that occur in the short term. The cyclical component aligned with the property of always being sideways allows the trader to predict volatility more easily than the price itself. Let's look at a simple example in recent times. If we zoom in the chart again, we can see that in 2018 and 2019, there was a very strong support line displaying the lower limit of the implied volatilities of options in the, in the S&P 500. This would make it easy to employ certain institutional trading techniques where we have to trade volatility. Notice also that the most prominent highs also give some indication about future volatility extremes. For example, the volatility spike in 2018 provided a support for a massive drop in volatility that occurred after the peak of volatility in the global pandemic. When the implied volatility touched that level, it spiked up again 70% in one single day which is almost unthinkable. The lower spikes of 2019 are now providing some sort of support to the most recent volatility in the market. Notice that the first time the volatility touched those lower highs of 2019, it jumped up again. We are currently testing that support again, and we are also starting to see the effects of the global pandemic in various economic indicators like the GDP of several countries and the earnings release of the most important companies in the world. 
In other words, it's likely that we'll see another spike in volatility. By learning the institutional trading methods, you'll be able to take advantage of these volatility spikes in very interesting ways. Once again, it's a lot easier to deal with volatility than it is to deal with price itself, because volatility has a few interesting properties that make it more predictable. Even though I use some technical analysis in here, the institutional trading methods have none of that. They use a much more mathematically robust way of analyzing if volatility is cheap or expensive. These methods are very appealing to those who want a more objective way of trading. The goal of this video was to show you only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the way institutional traders approach the market as a way to spark your curiosity about it. There are many ways of trading, of course. Right now, I offer several trading courses that approach price action from a scientific point of view. If you have interest in learning these methods, you can learn more about them by visiting my website fractalflowpro.com and by watching several of my other videos where I show the accuracy of this type of analysis. I hope you found this video interesting. If you like the type of material that I produce, please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving your feedback about the video in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.